And it was a revolution 50 years ago today. One of the great rock albums of our time was released, The Beatles. That white cover, that sleek cover, it quickly became known as the White Album. And the 30 tracks on that album are still echoing today. We're going to explain <laughs> why that is and how it is and why there are Beatles um, references on the charts here in 2018. Alan Cross is with me this morning. Alan, you know, writer, broadcaster, host of the radio series The Ongoing History of New Music. Alan, thank you for coming in because you've allowed me to, to indulge myself on a little Thursday throwback, so it's great to see you. Hey, listen, it's it's a new Beatles record or a new-ish Beatles record. There's just no way that we can ignore it. That is exactly right. Where do you rate this one in the Beatles discography uh, uh, on the list of greatest of all time? I'm going to put it at number four. Oh, I think I think Revolver, Let It, um, Sergeant Pepper, mm -hmm. uh, Abbey Road come, come ahead of this record. Mm -hmm. This record's a bit messy. I mean, there's 30 tracks on it and at this point, John Lennon and Paul McCartney are really writing very much apart, and the band is sort of breaking up very slowly. Yoko's in the studio causing all kinds of problems. George Harrison's feeling isolated, so he's kind of off in the corner by himself. Ringo Starr actually ends up quitting the band for a few days because he's tired of all the bickering. George Martin is up in the control room looking down at everybody in Studio 2 at Abbey Road going, I've kind of lost control of everything. I don't know what's happening as the students are becoming the master. So it was a, a big sprawling record with lots of experimentation, a lot of electric stuff, a lot of acoustic stuff, and a lot of weird stuff. Yeah, everything all thrown there. And you say 30 tracks, because remember, it was, it was unusual. A double album in the day was a, was a very unusual thing. Yeah, I'm trying to think of another double album in the era of 1968, 69, and, I, and I, I'm sure there was one, but the Beatles could get away with it because they were, in fact, the Beatles. They were under an awful lot of pressure to make this record because they were coming off Sgt. Pepper, which was released in June of 1967. So it was a, 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 that was a massive success, a massive shift in the way rock and roll was being portrayed and consumed and regarded. Then they had the Magical Mystery Tour project, and that didn't really go over all that well. So they had mm. to bounce back from that. And what they ended up doing is recording a series of demos, and uh, they brought those into the studio with George Martin, tried to make sense of it all. A lot of the jams that resulted uh, in getting back in the studio really went nowhere. But George Martin and his crew had tapes running all the time, which is why this new reissue, the one that we're seeing on the charts right now, is so fascinating because it shows you the process the Beatles went through in making these 40s, uh, these 30 songs. It, pause on just a, it, pause on that for just a second because I, I actually haven't mentioned that to to our audience in case they're not aware. There is a Beatles record, this Beatles record. Well, it's a whole set in the top 10 on the charts right now because his son Giles has re reissued, remixed, remastered, and mm. put out all of this compendium uh, around the 50th anniversary of the White Album. So a whole new generation in some way is discovering it. At least that's the intent. Well, it's not just a, the, a whole new generation, which is true, but it's the old generation who love to study the Beatles. I mean, there is no band more studied, more documented, more picked apart than the Beatles. And this new collection gives everybody all kinds of new insights into how the Beatles operated individually and as a unit. Uh, we know all the songs on this record backwards and forwards, but now with this new re-release, we get to hear how those cool. songs came to be. Okay, uh, my incredible research staff tells me Electric Ladyland from Jimi Hendrix. Was ah, a that's double very possible, yes. Right at that good time. Good point, yes. I have a good team. Okay, just to let you go, when you say we're rediscovering these songs, let's just take a, a line on each of our favorites. I'm going to play you mine. Uh, here is a quick, sec and I want to get your, your take. Mine, when you talk about uh, George Harrison really maybe chafing a little bit against uh, George Martin, the rest of the gang, asserting himself, and he contributed this. Look at the world and 
Except this isn't he singing. I, we know this. No. <laughs> this is the very no, mellow Bob, version. That's, that's Bob singing. <laughs> but so many have recorded it. He, uh, while my guitar gently weeps, and of course uh, Eric Clapton playing the guitar and all of that. that a line on that. Is that, is that one of your Yeah. Uh, George Harrison was feeling increasingly isolated. And he felt he needed a friend in the studio, much like John had Yoko in the studio. So he brought in his buddy Eric Clapton to sing on uh, my, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, and that, or play guitar on While My Guitar Gently Weeps. And he's playing a special Les Paul that he called Lucille because it was red, and he named it after uh, <laughs> Lucille Ball, the comedian. Huh. See, this is why I like to talk to you. You know all the inside scuttlebutt. I'm not sure what version we're going to hear of this one, but your pick is Dear Prudence. So let's have a little psychedelia before we go. Dear Prudence, won't you come out to play? Dear Prudence. I mean, these have been covered so many thousands of yeah. times. We should probably explain. You, you, the Beatles are very, very restrictive when it oh. comes to airing their material, so you'll get in a whole lot of trouble if you play the Beatles versions of these on, on the air. So thankfully, there's so yeah. many covers. We still know the songs. There is a real Prudence. Her name was Prudence Farrow. She was the uh, sister of Mia Farrow, the actress. Uh, the Beatles met up with her while they were in India with the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And uh, in fact, a lot of the a lot of the songs came out of those meditation visits to India, and uh, that was that was you know John Lennon was talking about Prudence, who was there, who was a little shy and didn't want to come up and play with the rest of the people that were <laughs> gathered there. Cool, Alan. Thanks. That's kind of fun. November twenty second, nineteen sixty eight. The White Album arrived.